Hi everybody, happy Friday. Um, today I wanted to talk about the difference between uh, anxiety attacks and panic attacks. Um, I've been suffering from panic attacks for a while and I have the kind that just kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, I've had anxiety attacks but they're nowhere as bad for me as panic attacks are. So, I'm going to tell you the difference. So with the anxiety attack, um, the symptoms are, um, you know, irritability, um, dizziness, hard to catch your breath, restlessness, hard to sleep, um, the fear of doom or danger, and simply, you know, just having a hard time catching your breath. And the anxiety attacks can build up over time, um, even months. And that's the reason why those are completely different with like the panic attacks because panic attacks are more like you know either expected or unexpected but not over time so like with anxiety you can be set off in different ways such as um, going to a neighborhood that you're not used to walking around at night you know there that feeling of danger could be there or like me going over to a friend's house that has like a dog um, I've been attacked by dogs earlier in my life, and I kind of, like, have this feeling that I don't really want to be around them, like, kind of, you know, anxiety. So, when, you know, I talk to somebody and they're expecting me to be over, and I'm like, look, you have a dog, so can we, like, have the dog outside? Don't worry, the dog's really friendly. And that's fine, because that's what you know of that dog, but me, with my past history with dogs, um, kind of makes it where it's like, Okay, that's fine that your dog is cool with you, but I don't know the dog, and my anxiety flares up. So, you know. Again, I'm more prone to um, panic attacks than I am anxiety attacks. I've kind of gotten a handle on my anxiety attacks, although not completely, because if I'm put on the spot... I do start sweating because of the anxiety, like I don't feel like there's a way out of the situation. So I feel like that I'm stuck. So with like the panic attacks, the symptoms often like involve like chest pains, um, excessive sweating, um, heart palpitations, uh, the feeling of like you can't breathe or you're being choked, um, the fear of death. Um, derealization, de depersonalization, um, again also with like panic attacks that they can come on unexpected or they are expected. Um, like the unexpected ones could be like you're at work and all of a sudden you see yourself in a reflection and all of a sudden you have dysphoria and then all of a sudden like everything feels like it's going wrong and then you're just worried about like how you look and then all this other stuff and then you start thinking about it too much and then it just weighs you down it does it just tears you down and then you just want to cry that's I've had that before like I, I've been at work and this actually happened this week where I felt fearful um, I was in a situation, it wasn't anything bad, um, it was nobody else's fault, it was nothing that was any problem or caused by anybody or situation. It was just, it started out with a simple look in the reflection of a mirror and I started getting into my own head about what was, you know, wrong with me. Uh, then, you know, I started feeling heart palpitations, uh, then I started worrying about the heart palpitations because I also have a vitamin D deficiency that I'm still working on to improve, but because of my deficiency, sometimes I can get um, heart palpitations. So that made me freak out even more. So I was already, like, in this mood of, like, freaking out, and uh, then I started, like, sweating, which I hate when I sweat because I do excessive sweat sometimes because of my anxiety and panic. So it was just a whole situation that I brought down on myself because then I got in my own head about my own thoughts and then I started freaking out because I have issues, not only like issues like, you know, but actual issues, issues going on. So I brought it on myself and it was so terrible. And, but like I'm getting better at controlling it or 
dealing with it because I guess you can't really control it 100%. But I really do feel like I'm getting better with it. But, let's go back. Um, it came on and I didn't know what to do. But I did handle it better than what I normally do. And that was the good thing. So in that situation that I just described, it was expected because I felt it happening. And then I started thinking about it. And then with my heart palpitations, I started believing that it was a panic attack. And they are terrible. And once you have one, it's, you fear having it again. It's just like sleep paralysis. Um, when I had sleep paralysis, I freaked out for like two weeks straight. Like, I do not want to have them anymore, you know. I cried, I was scared, I was worried about having them. I had all my lights on in my apartment because I just, I couldn't bring myself to deal with having another sleep paralysis problem. Just like when, like, I guess I carry that with myself when I'm at work or out in public. The fear of having a panic attack in front of others because it's not fun. It's it's something that I could, if I feel it coming on, I can talk myself, calm myself down, focus on my breathing, calm myself down. But sometimes in some situations, it hits so hard and so fast that it does make you fall apart. It's terrible. So like I do have a fear of having more panic attacks over and over again, and especially in situations that I don't want to have them in. But I have been getting better at controlling them. Not 100%. I don't think that you can control them 100%. Just like any other fear, I don't think that you can control it 100%. Having a fear of a panic attack again can cause you to have agoraphobia, which can make you avoid, like, situations or places where there's other people or like crowds or waiting in line for stuff or or like small areas where you feel like you're confined to that one little area you know that can that can make you start going to towards a panic attack and I also have this you know problem with um, embarrassment because my past so, and those thoughts that I carry from my past, like I still carry those with my panic attacks. So that fear of being embarrassed also adds to that factor. But, you know, back to agoraphobia, you know, feeling help, helpless, you know, stuck in a situation, just feeling uncomfortable all around is kind of like a high point of it. Um, you know, crowds, people, gatherings, all of that, that people find so easy to do. Some people have an issue with that because they're worried about the consequences, like with what they're dealing with. Um, and that can cause more panic attacks. Basically, an enclosed, like a isolated area, um, crowded, whatever, with, you know, fears of helplessness or thoughts of un being uncomfortable or just being in that situation that you don't want to be there can do that. But, anyways, this was my little video about, um, you know, the panic versus anxiety, anxiety versus panic attack. And um, so, again, Nice little video. Happy Friday, everybody. And again, let me remind you that everything that I just said was what I've learned and all my opinion. It's, it's possible that there's different ways to see it. There's, it's possible that you might see it a different way. Again, I don't speak for anybody other than myself. Um, I do not speak for anybody other than myself. So everything that he is here is based on my opinion or my thoughts or what I've learned in my way. So with that, everybody enjoy their weekend and um, be safe and please do the two things, like, share, subscribe, comment, 
you know, do all the things for me, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to check out my Twitch. Bye.